Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're just going to go over the basics on mobile photography. Now if you don't know me, I'm really into photography, but I'm also poor. <laughs> so I do it, I use what I can pretty much. And I'm going to teach you guys just the basics. So we're not going to go into like pro mode or editing, but that will be in a future video. So stay tuned for that. I will have a separate video for how to use pro mode and just editing your photos mo on mobile. Don't worry, I won't make you become a Visco girl. We're not using Visco. I don't like to use that app for editing, so just just subscribe if you want to see that in the future. Anyways, um, the basics. So first of all, first off, we're just gonna be working with the auto mode. We're not gonna go into like any of the other modes because auto mode is just the basic one that everyone gets. Maybe for portrait mode, we can talk about that for a little bit. But the main thing you want to do when you first start off. You want to ensure that your lens is clean, obviously. You want to make sure that your every your lens is clean so you get a clear photo. And then you also want to make sure you have the grid on. For me, I use a 3x3. Three three. It's You can use a 4x4 four four too, but it just helps you center or get that angle or an alignment that you want. For example, if you want it to be off-centered, well, you can get it a perfect off-center by using the grid on your phone. And it's just easier to work with. For example, on macro shots, you want to be able to know when it's actually in the center of the photo. So you would get super close to the, fo to the picture you want to take, right? And then use the grid to show you how close you need to get or how far you need to get to get it centered in the middle of your photo. So that's just a basic one. Always make sure you're focusing on what you want. So for example, if you have a flower and then you have the green in greenery in the background, <clears throat> well, you want to focus on the flower and not the greenery. So whenever you're going to take a photo, make sure to click on what you want the camera to focus on. So on iPhone, it has a square. On Samsung, it has like a circle. So you just want to tap and that'll automatically make the camera know, oh, this is what he's focusing on. And if you notice right after you tap, there's an exposure slider. And what that does, it just like lets light into the photo or takes more light out of it. <clears throat> and you can mess around with that. Most of the time, you're not really going to add brightness. It's more to take away from my experience. But the main reason you'd use this is for nighttime shots or if something has really big shadows on it and you might want to get rid of them, you would adjust it a little bit, but not too much towards where it just looks really faded and ugly. So you just mess around with that until you get the perfect shot, basically. And more, for example, if your phone doesn't have a dedicated night mode, which a lot of phones now do, but if you have like one of the old previous iPhones, it won't. So what you want to do with that is you'd take your photo but before you take it in nighttime obviously you want to make sure that your exposure slider is all the way down so you can get a better nighttime shot because whenever you use auto mode on an iPhone Samsung or anything like that and you and you're in nighttime the photo will automatically look really grainy and the sky will look white and not like true black so the exposure slider helps with that and I'll be showing like sample photos that I've taken through all throughout the video so you guys can get a better understanding of what the photo is supposed to look like so the exposure slider drag it all the way down it gives for better nighttime shots and even when using night modes I do prefer to use if it's not too dark and you have lights all around you for example at my dorm we have lights going all the way down the halls but I wanted to get rid of the light but also have some light you get me and so basically what you do, you drag that exposure slider all the way down and then you click the camera night mode it, since it's there and you take the photo. And when you do that, you'll get a better night mode shot than, than you did if you just re used regular night mode. So this also applies to ju not just auto mode. Now portrait mode is very subjective. You can use it however you want. But for me, I always like to center my photos. Usually I don't really use portrait mode as much because your phone will already have an automatic blur whenever you take a photo. But it's just personal preference. It's, it looks really good for portrait photos obviously. But I don't seem to use it with nature photos and like scenery. Whenever you're taking a nature photo or like a scenery or like just like greenery or like anything out in the open that's not a person. You want to get more detail and you want to get all basically everything in your surrounding area unless you're just trying to focus on one object that's different but even when you're just trying to focus on one object like I said the flower photo with the greenery in the background you don't want the greenery to be too blurred out 
which is what could happen with portrait mode. Sure, you can go in and adjust how much blur you want, but sometimes the edge detection isn't all that there. So just using the subtle blur by tapping on the subject that you want to focus on helps a lot. It helps distinguish it from the, the foreground from the background, which is really nice. You have the exposure, you drop it down if it's too bright, you higher it up if, if it's too dark. It's just, you literally just have to play around with this. And now since the auto mode isn't the greatest with shutter lag, I know when you click the camera it'll take like, not like a long time, but you can notice the time it takes because it's taking the photo, right? So whenever you're trying to take a fast moving object, take a picture of a fast moving object, you want to make sure you're using burst mode. That's all you do. You click and hold. And while that person's moving or running, some of the shots should look good. And you just go by one by one on which one you like and which one you don't like. And then you can like adjust it a little bit, tweak it here and there. And I'll teach you guys how to do that in the future episode of this like mini series that I'm doing. But that's that's pretty much it. Those are the basics. Make sure your lens is clean. Make sure you have the grid on to help you center subjects. Portrait mode make for preferencing for my preference is to have the person centered all the time. And then for like greenery and scenic shots, you don't want to use portrait mode. You want to try to tap on the objects you want to focus on. That's always good before you take a photo, regardless if it's a flower or a person or like a, a piece of grass or something. I don't know. You just always want to focus on it so the camera knows, oh, I'm trying to focus on this object. And if you press and hold, sometimes it's, it locks on. Not all the time, but it's most most of the time it does lock on with most phones nowadays. So you press and hold, and it'll lock on that subject, so it won't like take out of focus, if that makes sense. Because sometimes you'll tap it, and then it, the phone will automatically like not focus on that object anymore. But right when you try to take a picture, which can be pretty annoying, so to save time, you might want to just press and hold. And the exposure slider, if it's too bright, you lower it. If it's too dark, you higher it. For nighttime shots, you want to lower it for if you want to get the best nighttime photography. And if you're using a night mode, a dedicated night mode on your phone, it would also be preferred if you lowered that exposure because it gives it a better gritty feel than if you just used the normal night mode and it came out all grainy and ugly. But that's pretty much it. In the next video, we're going to go over pro mode. So stay tuned if you want to see that. I hope you guys enjoyed this short video. I didn't want to make it too long since it's just the basics. Um, if you did, it would mean a lot to me if you could like the video. And if you want to see more like content like this, please subscribe and turn those post notifications on. Anyways, that's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.